Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about rep ranges. A lot of people want to know why we make up programs with certain amounts of sets and certain amounts of reps and what's the difference in the training principles behind doing so. Well, let me start off by saying that any rep range and any number of sets that you're using in your resistance training will lead to an improvement in strength and an increase in muscle mass. Having said that, the difference between the amount of reps you might be doing in a set is usually programmed in relation to whether you are training for maybe power, strength or muscle endurance. What you tend to find is that in the lower rep ranges or the lower sets that you're being programmed to work on the power of a movement. Now, power doesn't necessarily mean the heaviest weight you can lift. What it actually means is the heaviest weight you can lift in the shortest amount of time and obviously on top of that keeping good technique. So because power is incorporating the elements of strength and time that means you need to take into consideration the role that the nervous system is playing. In particular if you are working with an athlete on power movements you'd definitely be wise to be building up strength beforehand to make sure that muscles, joints, tendons and ligaments are strong enough to be able to cope with the increased force. Typically, if we're talking to strength and conditioning coaches, we tend to do about three to five main movements in a session with any auxiliary lifts added on top of that. And our sets could be anything from three to five sets per movement. Next, we're looking at strength. So strength reps tend to be anywhere between six and 12 reps. And to bring about adaptations in strength, we're trying to increase or improve an individual's hypertrophy. So that means muscle building. When you're working on muscle building, there's a few elements that come into play. One being muscle fiber damage, two being time under tension, and three being adequate recovery. To help you understand this a little bit more, we're gonna to go to what's called the Henneman size principle. We have different types of muscle fibers. We've got a type one muscle fiber, which uses oxygen. It's a smaller diameter muscle fiber and tends to not produce as much force as the other fiber type, which is your type two muscle fibers. Now, here we've got type two A muscle fibers, which are fast twitch and glycolytic. We also have type two X muscle fibers. Now the research shows that type two X are actually trainable and that therefore they can take on characteristics of the other muscle fibers. We are all born with a set proportion of type one and type two muscle fibers. This is why you get some people that are born sprinters, some people that are born marathon runners. But depending on the proportion that you've got, you can train to improve in either. One thing we wanna try and get away from with the Henneman size principle is that heavier is better. So a lot of bro science ends up telling you the heavier you go, the better it is in order to bring about hypertrophy and increase strength. But of course, that is not the case. There's more to it than just being able to lift as heavy as you can all of the time. So going back to strength training, if we think about the hypertrophy element again, those type two muscle fibers have a bigger diameter. What we are trying to do is to adapt those type two muscle fibers so that they become bigger. That is what increases the size of the muscle. What you'll also tend to find when coaches are programming a hypertrophy training plan for you is that there's usually slightly less recovery than there would be in the power range of reps. And this is to be able to target more muscle fiber damage and time under tension in the time that you have available. During the power range of reps, you wanna ensure adequate recovery in between sets to be able to perform an explosive movement, recruiting the muscle fibers accordingly and to allow for the role of the nervous system. Recovery here can be anything between three to five minutes. Of course, with muscle fiber damage, we also need to focus on muscle fiber recovery, such as rest between sessions, your protein intake, and so on. Going beyond those rep ranges of six to 12 reps, we're then looking at muscle endurance. So usually anything that's going beyond that 12 to 15 rep range is muscle endurance. Here, you'll be more likely to be targeting those type one muscle fibers, which as I mentioned before, tend not to be able to produce quite as much force and are using oxygen and triglycerides as a fuel. Anything beyond that kind of rep range starts to become cardio, so we don't really care about that. 